everyone and welcome to another episode of Learning with Human Kinetics. My name is Aaron and this is the 19th episode of Learning with Human Kinetics. Um, we do our best to give you a variety of topics each month to learn, learn from um, and discuss and I encourage your input. Uh, if there is a topic that you would like to hear me discuss, uh, you know, drop it in the comments and I will do my best to answer your questions and to possibly turn it into a full episode uh, if that is warranted. So I previously uh, discussed topics like injury reduction, uh, how to design a complete workout program, training for power, uh, the impact and benefits of caffeine for performance, uh, the benefits of training as we age and why we should train as we get older, uh, goal setting, and quite a few other topics as well. Now today's topic is one that I believe that uh, we all think about uh, when it comes to sports performance training, uh, but it doesn't get talked about nearly as much as maybe it should. I'm going to talk about peaking for performance uh, and the importance of tapering. Now when we talk about training for a sport, uh, we talk about you know going through the steps of periodization uh, and formulating a plan to lead up to the season. Now this usually includes any type of hypertrophy phase, uh, if the athlete needs to add muscle, uh, at some point we will work on strength and stability uh, through the joints, mobility, you know, pure strength and power mixed with uh, speed work and um, any other phase of training that the athlete needs in order to become stronger, more powerful, uh, more athletic for his or her particular sport. Um, and even specific uh, position within that sport. Now, when we periodize, we work backward from the point uh, that we want the athlete to be at his or her strongest or most powerful. But sometimes when we get there, uh, the programming gets kind of lost in the mix of continuing to progress the athlete in the realm of strength or power. Um, or maybe in the case of an endurance athlete, uh, the volume stays super high because you want to make sure that they, uh, quote unquote, don't lose it. The reality is, rather than continuing to push the athlete to their limits, getting them to peak at the right time actually means reducing volume at the right time. Now this can be different for each athlete and it will uh, vary depending on the sport and what season uh, is in session. Now you want to determine the most important time of the season for the athlete uh, and program their training for that moment. Um, that could be you know, a conference tournament uh, toward the end of the season or the actual postseason itself. Um, like I mentioned, rather than ramping up training all the way through until the postseason, volume actually needs to come down a little bit. So bringing down the training volume uh, is what most people uh, might know as tapering. Um, I've traditionally heard of the word tapering uh, used more in the areas of endurance training um, and in sports like uh, long distance running and swimming, uh, but it's the same idea for power sports. By tapering, we can actually elevate performance levels, um, but what does that look like? Now, typically, as an athlete gets closer to their target date, uh, which is usually, like I said, a big tournament or, or the postseason, uh, the workload is reduced. Uh, the primary goal here is to reduce the physiological and psychological stress that the athlete's experiencing in order to optimize performance. So what does that mean physiologically? Uh, everyone who has played a long sports season knows how intense it can be, and by the end of the season you're starting to get worn down. Um, this happens at just about any level, uh, if we're talking about pro, college, high school, um, and I would even argue that the middle school age um, or younger is starting to see this. Um, we know that young athletes are pretty resilient um, and can typically bounce back and fight off fatigue. But anecdotally, uh, I would argue that the 12U uh, age range is just as intense now as the 18U uh, for some sports and some leagues. Um, we know about year-round sports and travel sports. It's, it's non-stop. Um, this might be a good time actually to plug a previous episode where I talked about recovery uh, and overtraining. Now, uh, you can check out the full video on our YouTube channel in the playlist section. So the premise is to manage uh, workload and minimize fatigue at the most crucial point in the season. A key factor here is that training, and uh, when I say training, this also refers to sport practice, uh, training stimulates both a positive and negative training response. By training to get stronger uh, and practice to improve our skill level, uh, we are elevating our fitness levels, and of course, ideally getting better at the skill portion um, 
if we're talking about you know sports specific training uh, or that, that that actual skill practice so the downside is the accumulation of fatigue um, there's a difference between acute and chronic fatigue and I've talked about that before in previous episodes uh, but when you're finishing up a training session or a practice or competition you're probably going to feel fatigued um, that type of fatigue will tend to go away relatively quickly uh, with some rest and recovery Chronic fatigue, on the other hand, uh, is fatigue that accumulates throughout the season, um, and it's the type of fatigue that we're trying to combat and hopefully minimize during this tapering period. Now, think of tapering as a systematic approach to reducing fatigue while maintaining the gains in fitness that you uh, spent the previous you know, four or five months working towards. Now, the magnitude of training stress uh, will help determine how much of a taper is necessary. Um, if the training stress has been pretty large over time, then fitness levels should be, uh, remain relatively high, um, but that also means that fatigue is probably high too. On the other hand, if the body hasn't been stressed as much, uh, fatigue should be, at, uh, be able to uh, be reduced fairly quickly. Um, now I'm cross-promoting shows here again, but if you listen to my Author Talk interview with uh, Dr. Gregory Half, uh, you heard him talk about how part of periodization is managing fatigue and workload. Um, ultimately, the goal is to uh, the goal of taper is to reduce the accumulated fatigue that has been built up throughout the training year, uh, while maintaining fitness levels as high as possible. Now, uh, Zasorski and Kramer uh, suggested in 2006 in Science and Practice of Strength Training that. The duration needed uh, to dissipate fatigue is three times shorter than the duration that uh, fitness can be retained. So this means that by, by uh, manipulating the training loads, an athlete can decrease fatigue uh, levels relatively quickly while maintaining overall fitness levels. Um, again, the taper will be most effective if the athlete has put in work during their off season, uh, but the timing of the taper also matters. Um, if it's extended too long, you'll run the risk of you know, losing that fitness that you gained uh, because the training stimulus will be reduced. Um, the goal is to simply you know, allow the athlete time to recover from the intense level of training that they've been going through. Um, and when that happens, performance levels will actually increase. Um, think about it this way. If you are rested, and you are more likely to perform at a high level than if you're tired and your muscles are fatigued. So as you go up the chain of competitiveness, um, every minor detail becomes a huge advantage. Um, in the uh, 2016 Olympics, for example, there uh, was only a 1.3% difference between gold medal and fourth place in the swimming events. Uh, and in weightlifting, the difference was only 1.8% from first to fourth place. Um, typically, a taper will increase sport performance by about 3%. Um, if it's strength that you're going for specifically, the research uh, suggests that there is anywhere between a 2% and 8% increase in performance. Now compare that to the 1.8% difference between the first and fourth place in weightlifting uh, events in the 2016 Olympics, um, and you see just how important that is. Now, if you're lifting recreationally, uh, you might take a deload week every now and then and come back feeling refreshed, uh, stronger, and able to lift more weight than ever. Um, this surprises some people, but uh, those are the benefits of managing fatigue. Uh, there are a couple ways to consider a fatigue. Um, it could be either progressive or non-progressive. A non-progressive taper can be thought of as more of a sudden reduction in training load. Uh, but this is where you have to be careful, again, because if it's too sudden, uh, you run the risk of also dropping the overall fitness level too quickly. A progressive taper is used more often uh, than a non-progressive and is more systematic in that it can be incorporated um, a little more smoothly into the athlete's programming. Now, generally speaking, um, when you begin reducing the overall training volume, you can do it in one of two ways. You can reduce the duration of each training session or reduce the frequency of training. Uh, schedules might play into this to a degree, uh, but ideally the athlete would reduce the duration of each training session rather than the frequency. Uh, the reasoning for this is that uh, you want to keep the athlete sharp on the skill and technical side while managing that fatigue. So for example, instead of dropping uh, from say four training days per week down to two, uh, the athlete could continue training four days, but reduce the uh, training sessions from uh, 90 or 60 minutes, say down to 45 or 30 minutes. Um, 
Now, going back to the data, uh, a 41 to 60% reduction in training volume during a progressive taper has resulted in the biggest performance gains. So again, this is all relative and goes back to uh, how much volume and how intensely the athlete uh, was training prior to the taper. Now, don't get the volume and, and intensity confused. Um, it's so important for the athlete to keep up the training intensity, especially if it's a strength or power sport. So all of this talk about training load and volume and intensity, but I haven't mentioned yet how long the taper should be. Um, typically a taper is going to last about eight to 14 days. Uh, this gives the body time to reduce uh, any high levels of fatigue without seeing a decrease in performance level. Uh, going back to the idea of tapering for endurance sports, uh, one of the most common uh, recreational, um, I guess, sports that athletes might train for are, are races like a 5K or 10K or half marathon or maybe a marathon. Um, in most well-constructed uh, training plans, uh, the last week leading up to the race is pretty quiet. Um, the weekly mileage has been reduced at that point and um, it, it's kind of like a deload week to let the body recover from the high mileage it was put through for the previous you know, 12 weeks or however long that particular plan was scheduled. So it's similar to track and field, um, you know, it's springtime right now and the track season is kind of wrapping up for most teams. Uh, going into your postseason, hopefully you weren't crushing training with a high volume, uh, with high volume runs or excessive uh, sprint workouts. Um, you can keep the intensity high, but instead of say like 200 meter sprints, maybe you backed off and did uh, 100 meter or 50 meter accelerations as part of your speed workout. Uh, some coaches might be reluctant though to reduce the volume of training uh, for fear that too much fitness will be lost. Uh, I can tell you that a 2015 study cited that uh, training volume can actually be reduced for as long as four weeks uh, and still result in performance gains without the loss of fitness. Again, this is when, taper, uh, when the taper is done correctly and properly um, and when the intensity is maintained during the training leading up to the taper and during the taper while volume is, is reduced. So you definitely want to take into account um, the training that had been done prior to the taper and the intensity level that you're maintaining uh, during that taper. Uh, the same study suggested that a taper can actually improve power output. Now this is because the um, improvement in fast twitch fiber uh, function um, can be increased because of the reduction in fatigue. Um, this obviously allows, if you think about it, it'll, it'll allow the athlete to push a little harder during competition, uh, whether that's being more explosive for a vertical jump or you know pushing harder to the finish line. Maybe you're in football, you're able to um, uh, go more intensely during games. So keep in mind, tapering is highly individualized, or at least it should be. Uh, just like your training plan, every body is different. Um, some people fatigue faster than others. Some might recover better than others. Uh, but please keep in mind that you won't increase performance simply by tapering. Uh, if you didn't work hard during your off-season, your preseason, um, and in your in-season training, uh, you aren't going to get as big a benefit from a taper. In fact, you might actually run the risk of dropping your fitness levels too much uh, heading into the most important part of your season. Um, that's why while the taper is important, um, it will only be as good as your previous training. Uh, also important to note is that you can't spend the entire season tapering. Um, I know you, you can certainly monitor the training load and fatigue levels during the season, uh, but as far as a true taper, you, you can't do it every time a tournament or a, or a game pops up. Uh, for example, in training a club volleyball player, they have tournaments all the time, and I, I can't taper her for every tournament that comes up during the competition season. Um, it just isn't possible. If, if we did that, she wouldn't be making much progress uh, through the season and by the end of her season, uh, her fitness level would probably uh, drop so much that she wouldn't see any benefit at all. So instead, we would keep up the volume and intensity during the season, of course monitoring those fatigue levels in relation to uh, you know, the, the amount of practice time um, and tournaments during the season, and then start to taper in time for the national championships at the end of the summer season. Now, this is where it does get a little tricky and possibly an opportunity uh, for a future episode of Learning with Human Kinetics and that uh, club volleyball player might peak for nationals at the end of the summer season, 
Uh, but then they'll want to, you know, resume training and prepare for their school volleyball season in the fall. So um, maybe I can get a, a little more into that um, in a later episode. So regardless, remember the importance and purpose of the taper. Train hard and train smart throughout the offseason, the preseason, the in-season, um, and especially train smart during the postseason uh, with a well-constructed tapering plan. Um, I know that this was relatively brief. Hopefully it gave you, um, you know, some pretty good insight into a taper and um, what is important as far as training for peak performance. I would say to learn more about this topic, there are many great resources, but um, Scientific Foundations and Practical Applications of Periodization by Greg Half um, is definitely recommended, as well as uh, High Performance Training for Sports. I keep going back to that uh, book, but has so much great information in that. Um, I would also say stay up to date on the latest research uh, in our Human Kinetics journals at journals.humankinetics.com. Um, you can also check out episodes of Learning with Human Kinetics and Author Talk that I mentioned earlier on our YouTube channel uh, and watch them live each month on Instagram. Um, while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that bell for notifications um, so that you are alerted every time we do release a new video so you can uh, keep up on a lot of that great information. Um, and also follow us on our other social media platforms. I mentioned uh, you know, Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, and X. So thanks again for watching and listening along. Uh, hopefully you got a lot out of this. Um, and until next time, train smart and stay strong.